Hello YouTube, welcome to Tendi Garage. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different than how we normally would be doing. Uh, I'm just gonna be doing more like a vlog style of uh, a video, uh, which is long overdue. I'm trying to do an, uh, a channel introduction video. Uh, as you can see, I'm currently on the road. You have been mounted onto my sunroof with my camera. I'm also testing out a new wireless microphone that I've got lately. Uh, just want to see how good it works out to be, especially in future videos that's saying I'm, I'm under a car. So it will be difficult for me to fit a microphone through. And I realized the camera is built in um, a microphone is not really all that great so this video purpose it's more so to introduce to you who I am my passion about cars my inspiration why am I doing this and uh, what the channel focus is uh, etc those kind of things so to start off I guess let's talk about why am I doing this? Why am I creating this channel, Tendi Garage? Because I feel like there is a disconnect on YouTube for the BMW G20 chassis. Um, well, mine is an M340i, but most of my videos also apply to other cars like Supra, the MK5, of course, not the MK4 as well as the three, uh, 320, um, I believe that's only in Europe, and then the 330, that's also in North America and around the world as well. Uh, so I, I'm saying this connect on YouTube because there isn't really many videos out there, but when you're trying to find a tutorial guide, let's say how to change oil, you can find several on YouTube for the G20 chassis, but you will find millions and millions out there for the previous chassis, for example, the E90 F30. Of course, because those cars have been here longer than the G20, but at the same time, I feel like there are car enthusiasts out there that are trying to work on their cars. They just perhaps don't know where to start. They don't have the right tools, etc. Uh, so I'm creating this channel more so to help out people out there who have the passion to learn how to work on their cars. Um, yeah, so that's mainly the reason, the aim, focus, and the goal of me creating the channel to show you how I work on my cars. Uh, well, car right now, that, uh, that's my only car at the moment. Hopefully there will be more in the future, but let's just see, right? And also the other thing is that um, I was once a uh, more so average car enthusiast out there. So this ring just started out of nowhere. I hope it doesn't affect the audio quality. But um, I'll go over my previous cars in um, in a bit so that you would know. Just spoiler alert, it's a car that's pretty popular out there for regular maintenance, for modifications in general. Um, so I understand how overwhelming it can be if you are just trying to get into cars. So that's why I'm trying to, I guess, help out uh, to a certain extent to simplify things that everyone can understand what kind of tools you need etc and uh, let's talk about myself before i go over the cars that i have had previously i am in the automotive industry so that's why when i say um I'm a little bit more than an average car enthusiast. That's what I mean. I currently work as a level one apprentice in an auto body shop, uh, which is more like a collision center, really. 
Uh, so I do time to time work on cars at work. And my previous job last year was a vehicle inspection specialist at an auction site. So um, this, uh, the auction site was, or now still is, um, online only so there will be uh, specialists out there that's checking on cars to make sure they're mechanically sound the chassis is fine it's not rotten away uh is there any structural damage that's not reported on carfax which is obviously something that's really needed to know for uh as a buyer right um you will want to know what you're getting uh, before you auction off a car and you get the car realize oh the chassis is rotting away underneath you don't know about it but you bought it already what do you do so uh that's my old job and just before that i work at an office environment your regular nine to five job uh that's also more or less how I afford I was able to afford this car uh, because of the office job and you kind of can you can kind of tell it's such a drastic change for me to get into the automotive industry uh, took a huge paycheck cut um, but I just understand that everybody got a sat somewhere so that's where I started as a vehicle inspection and then a well, vehicle inspector and now I'm working in the body shop. Um, so yeah, that's what I meant by a little bit more than an average car enthusiast or DIYer out there. Um, just professionally, I do work on cars, even though I'm just a level one apprentice. So that's more or less my qualification, um, why I'm doing this or why you can i'm not gonna say you should but you can listen to what i'm trying to tell um to go over about like what do i do things why do i do it that way etc and most of the things that i do show on videos they are also uh going according to uh the service manual which most of you may not have access i got it because of my job but um, yeah, so that's oh, that's a big pothole. Hopefully, the camera angle is not affected. And then let's talk about cars that I previously have had owned. Um, my very first car was an um, 8th gen, so 2007 Honda Civic SI Coupe. Uh, those come in stick shift only. That's also my first car that I learned on how to drive stick shift. Uh, and then I didn't really, I wasn't really a big car guy back then, just starting off. Um, I didn't realize I like cars. I, to be honest, I hated driving at first too. Um, so after that one, I sold it. I got myself an automatic, a daily driver, Honda Fit, I believe it's a 2010, and then drove it for, uh, for a season or two, I don't remember that much, it's more than a decade ago. And then I got myself a 2011 Subaru Impreza, that's your not the car enthusiast model out there it's not the the ej25 5 or 7 it's not the sti engine or the wrx engine just your regular 2.55 non-turbo naturally aspirated uh, but that was the car that i started to get into cars mods etc um though that one was still an automatic but it got me started to like driving again, uh, trying to mod things. I did a, obviously your uh, soupy starter, the uh, your uh, Raleigh Armor mud flaps, as well as uh, I did a HID conversion kit on that car. That car was not fun. It was slow by all means, 
So later on, I think I drove it for like two to three years. I sold that one. One or two, actually, maybe one or two years. Sold that one. Oh no, that one got totaled. Uh, a T bone. Uh, not my fault, by the way. Then I got total, and then I got myself a 2016 Subaru WRX, six-speed manual. Uh, so going back to manual because I started to realize, oh, okay, so I do like cars. And that one, I still miss it till this day, sort of over three years ago. Uh, everything that you can name off pretty much has been modded. It was pretty heavily modified and then except for a turbo it's still considered the bolt-on as well as uh headers it didn't have half the market headers but uh things that you can name for example a short shifter and then um a cop access port tuned of course i got front mount intercooler which i also have a story later on uh, and then your regular stuff, your intake, your downpipe, catback exhaust, etc. All those kind of things is had it. And just to quickly circle back about the story um, on the intercooler. This is also one of the reasons why I'm trying to start this or created this channel is to help you learn from my mistakes so that you don't make uh, the mistake that I've made. So the intercooler, um, the boxer engine or Subaru engine uh, uses a, a well, boxer design, right? So uh, it's a flat four and then the intercooler is sit up top on, on the engine. So uh, when heat always travel upward so your intercooler that's a top mount intercooler it's going to be heat soaked when you say stop at a red light like what I'm uh, doing right now stop at a red light uh, your intercooler is gonna get heat soaked if you're trying to launch it um, it's not going to give you the performance needed and um, just not good in general that's it I had an aftermarket top mount intercooler previously before my front mount that was over a grand Canadian. Spent it after several months, uh, got it tuned and everything. And then I just realized it's good enough, but then I wanted more. Sold that at a heavily discounted price. And then got myself a front mount that's um, almost two grand. Say so for example, two grand. So I wasted that amount of money on the top mount intercooler which i could have gotten a front mount intercooler at that point so yeah so what i'm trying to say it's uh i would like i guess i would like you to learn from my mistakes so that you're not going to do what i've done wasting money on things that you don't necessarily need to and just do it do it once and do it do it right so yeah going back to my wrx uh it's heavily modified like i uh, mentioned earlier uh that's also the car that i've learned on how to work on my cars and I really feel like le learn to work on your cars and being able to work on your cars make you feel more connected to the car. So when, let's say you're on a road trip, uh, it happened to me once actually. My, I think it was my, well actually my charge pipe blew. Well, not blew up, but like blew out of its location where it's supposed to be. Uh, the clamp was tight. It just, um, I guess, too much boost for for that charge pipe coupler to be handled. Uh, but then, because I put on the charge pipe, I know exactly how to put it back on when I'm on the side of the road. Imagine that you don't know how to work on regular stuff like that and something happened on the road. Uh, you just left stranded. So that's 
one of the reasons why also going back to the aim uh, and the focus I'm doing this so that you can be more connected to your own car when you can actually work on it um, so yeah so the WRX really taught me a lot and that's how I embrace the channel name it's not actually TND Garage it's TNE Garage meaning trial and error garage in case you still haven't known yet um, there are just a lot of trial and error for me in terms of spending money spending time uh, different kind of things about trial it could be breaking things as well I've done so many times um, so yeah that's WRX after that I got myself um, 2017 my first Beamer 330i X drive after I sold the WRX and that's how I started to get into German car realize it just felt very very vastly different than um, Japanese cars uh, and obviously still still like a Beamer right um, that Beamer the 330 just your regular stuff I had a, a high flow intake panel filter retaining the OEM intake again uh, just like this one I've had an aluminum charge pipe aluminum turbo inlet so that I wished to hear the turbo whistle a little bit more and then a down pipe and a tune your regular beamer out there so after that one obviously is this current one a 2020 bmw m340i x drive that's a g20 chassis code and then um, i've always wanted a b58 so the 330 has a b46 engine uh, because it's North American spec and uh, the rest of the world you may have a B48 only difference really is um, one of the I should say one of the main differences is the downpipe fitment it's completely different uh, for the end that's meeting with the uppipe uh, sorry the midpipe uh, in case you're curious but it's more like a B58 with two less cylinder that car also taught me quite something of working on this b58 uh, even though this is a b58 tu unlike the f30 or f3x 340i or 40i in general uh, just something different with the tu uh, that's a technical update but that car taught me quite something when i did like the turbo inlet uh it uses like a c-clip design uh, also with the charge pipe as well uh c-clip design and uh, v-band clamp for the turbo uh that didn't happen and the use of and the use and the position of torques and e-torques bit it's something that didn't have on Japanese cars mostly um, so yeah that taught me and let me know what kind of tools I'm expected to have working on German cars so that's pretty much my car collection uh, that I would like to mention there is maybe one or two more that's really unimportant as a daily driver uh, which I saw, saw shortly after anyways so um, that's my car collection I hope this video I think I'm just gonna try to conclude it I hope this video helped to help you to learn who I really am uh, as well as kind of quote-unquote my qualifications on you know just in general working on cars uh, and just my focus my aim I hope this video as well as my channel in general has made you to become well inspired to work on your own cars like i said to be connected to your own cars um 
so yeah that's pretty much it that i'd like to conclude i know it's a long overdue video to tell you who i really am why should you listen to me uh why do i do things this way why do i need to use jack and jack stands you know those kind of things um so yeah, I really, I really appreciate if you could, uh, if this is your first video, check out the rest of my videos. It, it's especially if you have any just 40i engines like uh, B58 engine, I'm sure it will benefit you at, uh, be beneficial to you at some point in time when you're working on stuff on your own. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll see you in the next one while I'm still driving. Cheers.